Hi, this is Adam. And this is Mark. That's actually Mark Steinman from Papa, and I'm really honored and pleased to be doing some commentary with him. For those who don't know, Mark Steinman is responsible for all of the Papa awesomeness in the world. Is that a fair statement, Mark? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No, absolutely not. No, Papa is a group effort. There's a, there's a team of people over there who do a lot of things, Elizabeth, Doug, Steve, uh, Kevin, um, there's, there, it's definitely on more shoulders than just me. That's true, but you are the, at the spearhead of it. We appreciate all that you do with uh, Papa TV and Pinberg and the Papa World Championships. And uh, today we're going to be watching uh, the finals of the Illinois uh, State Championship Series uh, that the IFPA ran this year. Now, did, were you, uh, did you, let's see, you're in Pennsylvania. Did they have mm-hmm. a uh, SCS over there? They sure did. It was actually run at Papa headquarters. Doug Polko, one of our tournament directors uh, at the facility, helped put it on. And uh, everything went well. I don't know who won, but uh, I know there's a lot of tough players in Pittsburgh, so I'm sure the competition sure, was pretty Between fierce. Chris Stevens and uh, Replogal, I can't think of anyone else who might have won it. Let's, uh, Al Tomka, man. He's the crusher. <laughs> Ex- it could, maybe Al Tomka did win. We'll find out because the finals are going to be uh, at Lions Classic Pinball uh, alongside the uh, Lions Spring Classic, which is a uh, circuit event. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the finals in Illinois were between young Joshua Henderson. I guess I can still say he's young, even though he can drive now. Uh, uh, he's too good to be called young. He has, we, even, we need another word for him. It's not young. He's, yes. There he's has to be something else. Joshua. Joshua Henderson. Mm-hmm. And he will be playing Dave Heggie, who's not quite as young. <laughs> but uh, still good. But an excellent player. I, I think each of them beat a sharp on their way to the finals, uh, which is never an easy thing to do. No. Uh, and based upon, yep, it looks like we'll be playing on Tron, our first game of a best of seven series. Joshua Henderson, who likes his late Sterns, uh, clearly picked the game because he's going first. But, uh, what do you think about Tron? I think Tron's a great game. It's a classic layout. Uh, it, it, it reminds me of Tommy and Funhouse, and a lot of these shots have been reused over time because they just feel good. You know, oh, wow, that was nasty. That's a brutal sling drain uh, ball one from Joshua there. Yeah, I, I have nothing bad to say about Tron. Uh, I think the programming is great. I think uh, I, I even think the movie's all right, to be honest with you. Uh, overall, this is this is a game I enjoy playing, and I like to watch others. I love the uh, inner shot, the core shot, and when it comes around and you hit that side ramp, and it comes down to, of course, Steve Bowden, our wonderful friend, likes to say, you get paid by making that end-of-line shot. It's incredibly satisfying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's a big thing with games. You know, there, there, there's some games out there that just don't have that, that, that final, you know, just give it to me shot. The one where you just hear it hit the back of the scoop and it makes that clunk sound and it's just, it's so gratifying. And Tron, with the end of line combo, it gives it to you. It does. And we see uh, Dave now making some work. He's, he's doing, oh, it looks like he, oh, he almost had the uh, combo right there. Uh, he's working his uh, core, obviously core multi-ball, and uh, he needs one more light cycle to light his light cycle multi-ball. Uh, and also with Joshua not getting uh, any progress at all on ball one, he sort of already, uh, you know, he can kind of take control of the game here if he can uh, maybe stack some uh, multi-balls here. That's a very nice drop catch out of the scoop. So whenever you jumping up to this game for the first time uh, in a tournament, what is your basic strategy? How you, do you lead off? Multi ball. You want to? I, I personally like to do work and get to Cora uh, as quickly as possible and make the Cora shots. If light cycle is available, I'll use light cycle to progress it. But I, I really like uh, stacking light cycle in after Cora starts because really? Cora allows you to add a ball uh, twice, and then one you can bring light cycle in as like a third add a ball. Oh, okay, yeah. All right, I understand what you're saying. Do you uh, do you like to typically run multi-balls at the same time, or do you like to do the back-and-forth approach that you see on Spider-Man? Uh, if I'm going for a, a big score, I might consider going back and forth. But uh, when you're playing head-to-head, I think you, you stack them together. Uh, you're getting double value on quite a few of the shots. And with the latest software, the uh, both the Light Cycle and the uh, Cora Supers are non-trivial. They're, they're better value. There's good points there. Um, I think you just sign, you go all in and uh, put up as big a score as you can. And as we see Dave here doing, he's uh, he's not being shy about hitting that visor during ball save to uh, get his out of ball. Uh, yeah, I think he's it. used one, and he's got one more to go. There it is. So that's his second out of ball. Uh, the visor will come down now, and that's when you know your out of balls are done. 
you can put it up into the uh, what do they call it the regulator or I don't know, the mix master yeah the, the spinny disc I'm yeah the, uh, I, I forget what the this recognizer. version of it is the recognizer, the re- recognizer. Yeah. Um, it, there's nothing not, you don't get many points out of it in this but uh, I think uh, so we uh, so Dave here is uh, he's in his Cora He's used his out of balls. Uh, I couldn't tell whether he brought light cycle in as well. Oh my goodness! A... I, d- I don't think he did. So he might still only. Uh, let's see. Where's his score at? He's up to 13 million. I, I think he might have had both going. Yeah. There. No, he definitely did because looking at the inserts that are lit right now. Yeah, right. His light cycle did. is relit again, and that was a pretty bad double drain there. He was, uh, you know, one went out lane just as the other one was going down the center, and he kind of got handcuffed in between. Adam, you said something pretty interesting uh, about a minute ago. You made a reference to in a match play situation. And I always personally find it interesting from the director's seat to watch how players will compete on games in different fashions and change their strategies depending on what the format of the tournament is. Whether or not something is a you know a, a qualifying event and it's game one or it's game one versus game five on your ticket or if it's a head to head matchup. Um, yeah, that's and an it, excellent point, Mark. And it, it really is you, you some games, especially the modern deep games that have so many different rules and so many different risk rewards uh, you really do approach a game differently if you're trying to get a really big high score uh, and you get as many tries as you want with it or some some tournaments you need that a good score good solid score like a papa run where you don't need to blow it up but you need to do well you may approach the game differently and uh, try to do different things on it and then head to head it's a whole you know Joshua had that first bad ball you're already up a ball and uh, you don't need to, you know, get to see a simulation. You put up a 20 or Ooh, 30 million. Nice yeah, that was a good lowering of the flipper to recover that from uh, Joshua. Uh, so, yeah, you're definitely going to play. Wow, that left out lane and Joshua getting to know each other really well. Yeah, for some of the viewers who may not, who, who may not understand, pinball is essentially a game that's entirely based around risk-reward. But the risk and the reward changes depending on the in-game situation and on the in-tournament situation. So you're not going to play Tron in the same fashion uh, in uh, you know just one one game on your own as you would in a finals match like Dave and Josh are in here against one another because you don't necessarily need 50 million points. You just need to beat the other guy. Yep, and a lot of times, you know, you'll be playing in the arcade on your own and trying to get a high score on the high score board. And, you know, you're just blowing the thing up and getting this huge score. And, you know, you might think, well, I'll just go a tournament and be able to do the same thing. And uh, it never seems to work out that way. Uh, when you're playing in tournaments, it's amazing, and maybe it's a, a mental thing, but the ball seems to find the out lanes more. It seems to get out of control more. It just feels like you get more bad beats. And uh, while watching that, uh, Dave Eggy got into uh, the recognizer uh, multiball. There's some uh, big points in here if he plays it right. It's, uh, you know, I think uh, I talked to Zach Sharp, who's uh, one of the, it's one of his favorite games, and he plays it so well. He'll get the restart there. Uh, no, he, oh, that was interesting. He hit it before the other ball. It, it hadn't restarted because okay. he was still in two ball play at that point. But there's the restart. Uh, if you don't get the super in this, uh, they added this in the most recent uh, version of the code. Uh, if you don't get the super, then and you get down to one ball, there's a very generous period in which you can restart the multi ball. Uh, and uh, you know that's another point is that a lot of these modern games, the the rules uh, change a bit. The game's not quite done when they release it. And as a player, and we're trying to learn the nuances of the risk reward. Uh, he's getting to the super now. you got to hit the visor three times once it lowers. There's the third time. And then now at the super's lit. Now you can have a look and see if where his double scoring is. He's not holding on at all. He's just plugging yeah, it right in. And he's, he is plugging it in. And you see his super wasn't all that beefy. The super is a combination of all the regular jackpots. And if you want to get greedy in this mode, you can shoot uh, that center ramp. You can shoot some other ramps and really get a lot more regular jackpots to build up the value of the super. You can also double the super by the double scoring uh, on the Tron targets there. Uh, Which are on the left. Yep, on the left there, blinking. Uh, But it's sort of a luck as to which award, whether you get the pop bumpers or the double scoring. In this version of the code, can you drain out and get your double bonus? Uh, Yes, unless they have changed that in the last version. I believe that's been in there for a while. Okay. 
uh, that if double scoring is running as you drain, then all the bonus is doubled, which is uh, it's very interesting. We <laughs> have seen... Is- which is a nerve-wracking situation to be in as a competitive player. If that's you got how enough you're to worry to about, win. right? <laughs> Knowing when to drain. Yeah. We have seen some very, uh, uh, you know, p- draining with uh, with purpose. <laughs> there was a great match between Bowen and uh, Bowen Karens. Uh, do you know Bowen? I, I've bumped into Bowen You've once or twice. Him? Yeah, once or twice. Uh, Bowen and Zach actually. Uh, it, in uh, Chicago, had a uh, epic Tron that involved some double scoring uh, drainage. But uh, anyway, we're in the match here. Joshua is in a in a real hole. Uh, Dave's got thirty uh, playing those multi balls. Uh, he hasn't started a multi ball, so everything's in front of him, and he could certainly get back there. How far is Josh Takora? Has not made much progress. I I, I want to say he's only made one or two shots. He's probably yeah. three or four cores away still. Right now, I think he really needs one more. Li- he needs to get one more light cycle and yeah. just get to a multi ball to you know get. Go- he hasn't really gotten going in this game. He's still he's trying. Yeah, he's trying to get the, that core. You see him post passing there to. You can't shoot core from the left flipper. You have to shoot it from the right. Especially, uh, oh, got to hit that. Ooh, wow. It's a gotta, wonky, wonky post pass. Got to prioritize that shot, especially whenever it's a two for one like that, lit for both light cycle and core. Yep, and he's uh, and he's got five five to go on the regulator and the magnet. Uh, uh, that's, he he really never got off the uh, schneid there. Uh, no, Josh is better than that. Yep, and that was only game one. And these guys, this is the fourth round. Uh, there were 16 players in each state, uh, all playing head-to-head, best of seven. So he has already played 20, you know, 15 to 20 uh, intense games of pinball already today by the time the finals came around. So, uh, Adam, for someone who may not understand, how would you qualify for the IFPA state championship? The IFPA, it was based all on your uh, Whopper ranking points. And the uh, IFPA runs the uh, pinball rankings, which I think most people have heard about by now. Uh, they're called the, the Whoppers, the World Pinball uh, Player Rankings. IFPAPinball.com. Uh, IFPAPinball.com. And uh, it's a great database of tournament results, and they can sort it by state. And so they can have a list of all the Whoppers that every player has gotten by state. And they took the top 16 players for each state, and they uh, made this new tournament. And uh, I, I know in Colorado, it, it, it was very well received. Everyone loved having this new tournament. Everyone cared about their state whoppers all year long. And people came out in droves to all the local tournaments uh, just to build up their state whoppers to try to be one of the top 16 guys uh, and gals in Colorado to uh, play in this thing. So the once again, driving the interest of competitive pinball, uh, I think it was, it was brilliant. Uh, that's, that's one of the things that... Whopper and IFPA does exceptionally well is they give people a reason to care. And whenever, you know, it, but back before the IFPA and Whopper, there were tournaments. There's not as many as there are now because the girth of the game has been exponential uh, over the past, uh, past few years. But if you didn't have a ranking system or you didn't have any way to really measure your progress other than the odd tournament here or there uh, once every four months, it was, it was inherently less interesting. But now that people have an actual guide in, uh, you know, in, in a listing of their events in a, in. I, yeah, I love, I love Whoppers for just a, I could go back and look at all the, all the tournaments I went to in 2006. And that's right. awesome. As it just a, uh, you know, it's like a Facebook, uh, history wall or whatever they call it on Facebook. It's a real service to the community and it really helped to grow the interest of the game for sure. And so this uh, state finals is a is another great product that they're able to get from the Whopper data. Uh, and then the winner of this tournament and the winner of this one right here gets to represent their state in the uh, national championship. You know, it, it, if I can jump on a soapbox here real quick, uh, if you haven't, if you're a pinball player and you have not thanked or shaken Brian Shepard's hand. I'm not even going to tell you why. Just do it. Because this guy has done a tremendous amount of work uh, for, for the pinball community, and he's definitely someone who we all owe a debt of gratitude to. That's, a, that's an excellent point, Mark, because, you know, Josh Sharp is the face of IFPA and, to some extent, his brother, who's been playing better than him the last couple of years. Jo- uh, Zach is on fire. Zach, Zach is great. Yes, both here and in Europe when he uh, somehow managed to play both seasons, uh, thanks to his work. Uh, those are the guys we hear about a lot, but Brian is the uh, the brains of the outfit, 
in terms of the uh, database and running the website and uh, all things Whopper. And uh, so Brian Shepard and uh, uh, some of the other guys who helped them out a lot, uh, Brian Woodard, if I'm saying his name, uh, he comes out to all the IFPA uh, World Championships anyway. Um, those guys, they do a great job. And uh, Brian doesn't get mentioned a lot. So I'm noticing something here that's a little unusual, especially for a high-level player. I'm seeing Dave Heggie hold up his flippers at what appears to be odd times. And I understand that as a competitive player, your, your frame of mind and your comfort level has a lot to do with how you play. But this is very unusual to see a, a, a high-level high caliber tournament player hold up flippers whenever they don't necessarily need to be raised so yeah uh, that's an excellent point i've always I, I don't uh i don't recommend it for players because a lot of times when you need to make a slap save uh if you have a flipper up and i think bowen also uh says this a lot in his um in his excellent tutorials that uh you guys do at papa.org slash blog and where all the video links are for people who haven't seen all the tutorials and all the other wonderful video products uh, that you want to lower the flipper because the very first thing you need to do is to if the ball's going down the middle and you want to slap at it you need those flippers to be moving up and if the flipper is already held up the first thing you got to do is drop that flipper before you can get it back up whenever you're playing a game where milliseconds matter and you know tenths of an inch make a difference you always want to be prepared to make a defensive move and it's I'm, obviously it works because he's in the final and this this is something that he's capable of doing and doing successfully but I'll be damned if I'm not going to say it's just odd to watch I it, it is odd and I remember the first I asked uh, the sharps about it and apparently he's uh, he pretty much has done that and you know Dave's been a great tournament player for decades and yeah, he he's has qualified. always yeah, qualifies at Papa. I mean, he's a, he's a great player. He for won sure. Papa B. He won seniors at Papa. Uh, Ooh, nice. Big move there. Is that Henderson? Yeah. All right, Joshua. In- that's an excellent uh, slide save there. Rewarded for the effort too. He he's probably played this game earlier in the day and knew that the tilt would allow him to get away with a double danger slide save. I'm I'm excited because a lot of times I don't think that's a that's a forte in Joshua's game. I think that's one of his weaknesses is that he's wonderful at regaining control when the ball is out of control, but he's not, I don't see him sliding the game a lot when that ball is dead, dead center, that he'll, he'll do us, he'll do a big slap save instead and, he lets uh, and that watch one the ball go down. Leave. Yeah, he lets that one rightfully leave knowing that he uh, doesn't have any dangers left. Um, just to touch on what you were saying, Adam, it's interesting to me as a tournament director and watching all of the pinball videos and broadcasts that I end up watching, um, some people may immediately balk at this, but I believe nudging skills uh, in a lot of situations correlate inversely to accuracy. Uh, I, I think uh, Josh is a highly accurate player, and he he succeeds so often not having to put big moves on a machine that it just it's in his repertoire, but it's not something that surfaces all that often. That's uh, you know, that's an excellent point, Mark. It, it, this is why I wanted to do commentary with you. You got to get in front of the mic more. <laughs> Your observations, you've probably watched more overhead pinball than anybody but me. And <laughs> you've got these wonderful observations. And it's exactly right. Someone like Donovan Stepp, who was sort of my mentor, uh, he is awesome when things are out of control and getting the ball back, right? When things look crazy and it looks like Donovan is out of control, he's at his best. But that's probably because the ball's out of control a lot. And for somebody like, say, Keith Elwin, who's extremely accurate, or Bowen and Joshua also is in that school, Mm -hmm. that maybe they're not used to getting control back all that much. (laughs) Yeah, there's different types of skill sets. And, you know, obviously there's different ways to play a game and there's different strategies that people use. But there's also different player styles. And within those styles come come varying skill levels or varying... uh, what, what am I trying to say here? Varying skill levels at particular techniques. Some people are better nudgers, some people are better shooters. And if you're a player who is not as accurate, it just and you play a lot of pinball, it just it, it naturally fits that you're going to be a good nudger, or at least you're going to think about nudging more often. Because um, the ball's always out of control. It's what I tell Escher, who's way more accurate than I am. It's I'm better at getting control after the ball's out of control because the ball's always out of control for me. If you yeah. make your shots... 
You make the ramps, you make where you're shooting, the ball's not out of control. You've got other things that are on your mind, like making the next shot and hitting the supers. So what are we looking at here with uh, with Transformers? So Back we're on Transformers. Uh, yeah. Dave, uh, Dave picked it and got off to a good start, got right to his multi-ball. Uh, there's an excellent uh, tutorial for like an hour, and it's even longer than this match, of Bowen playing... Uh, Transformers at Papa, and I recommend for anyone who's interested in the game, uh, watch the Bowen tutorial. It's wonderful, and you can see so many different facets of this game. And yeah, now that you've pointed it out, I'm having trouble not looking at that raised flipper all the time, and just being mesmerized <laughs> I'm sorry. by it. Um, so as we just, Dave has been doing it for his whole career, as far as I know, and he's incredibly successful at it. So if it, you know, you find what works for you. Everyone who sees Lyman Sheets in his stance for the first time, it's like. What is that guy doing? Or Roger you know? Sharp, for that matter. Yeah, Roger's got an interesting stance. Or, or even, you know, the way Andre Masenkoff moves around so much, or Rick Stetta. Um, everyone kind of, you find your own rhythm, you find your own what works for you, and you stick with it. And uh, for Dave, holding that flipper up works for him. Maybe as a timing device or just as a, a feel. You know, you ever seen, you, you, you're probably used to the Jim Belsito. He likes to flip his flippers a lot when he has the ball cradle as just sort of a you know keep a feel of the flipper button and the you really you're it's such a you know visceral experience when you're playing pinball and you stay attached to the game in different ways physically and uh, for Dave I think that's the way he stays attached to the game so we're looking at Dave here um, just what dropped out of Megatron and running the risk of going 2-0 on Josh here if he pulls this out yeah, um, what's I get, it's a little hard to see. Oh no, this is, is who's player? Uh, I'm We're actually sure. watching Joshua right now. I thought who's Josh behind? had the hat. No, because it's hard to tell from this angle. Let's see who's who's coming up here. Oh, <laughs> we already missed it. <laughs> Wow, sorry. We we are talking. We're talking deep philosophicals yeah. here, and uh, these guys are playing. I think that was uh, Dave as player. Yeah, two. I, I you think, know why? Because the the rules here are the loser gets to choose. Yeah, and I got so because there. It's one one now. I yes, because one. Joshua Henderson lost the first game, he got to choose the second game as well. Old Chicago, Kaylee George's favorite. Yeah, this was uh, the final game of IFPA uh, nine. Uh, even though they only got to play one ball on the, uh, the very unlucky tilt through uh, when uh, Kaylee uh, tilted through his ball to Daniele and uh, Daniele, it was the game five of the match, and so Daniele won. And uh, the, the IFPA actually changes the way that uh, EMs are played now, uh, and in fact, we're, we're seeing it right here, right? That was player mm-hmm. two, and yeah. now Joshua is player three. So how do you how do you change your mindset as a competitive player going from Transformers a modern Stern to old Chicago? You know what? you yeah you it it's it, a different flippers and different flipper skills so you got to think about it a little but it, all these guys have played in enough tournaments and and a lot of tournaments have sort of all the errors stuck together that uh, you just kind of you just need to sort of tune change your brain a little. I always have different music for an EM versus a, uh, uh, you know, modern game. Mm-hmm. But uh, at the same time, it's still pinball. Uh, some of the skills you use uh, translate well, others don't. I would uh, love to see him just let that bounce over. I'm real know, interested to see bounce. what the kick out is. Yeah, because this game is so repeatable if you can control that dead bounce. But, uh, you know, Joshua, he's not one. Oh, see if nudge, he can. Nudge, oh, nudge. look at Nice. That. Did you see the tap on the right side of the machine? Just... Right at the end, he did give that a little bit of a slap to try and bring it back over. I, and I hate to say, I don't know that the slap is necessarily what brought it over. It would have been more of a little side-to-side. Well, it looked um, good. But he, he did move the game just a smidge also that got it to work. Um, sometimes getting into the... Sometimes getting into the, uh, the rhythm of it... Uh, you know, and not trying to, to overplay it on an EM is is what makes a lot of guys successful. You see, some of the more control players uh, can get into trouble because they end up losing the ball a lot trying to get control on an EM, where somebody else is just flipping. Uh, they're getting points. I'm speechless. I think this is the longest ball of old Chicago I've ever seen. 
this game uh, is usually so fast and drainy, and uh, he's already pushed it out of, I think, three or four different outlanes. And, you know, the, there's so many different ways that this game can <laughs> can drain you out. I mean, he's he's almost he almost has the entire... He did! He spelled Old Chicago. He's basically reached the Valinor of Old Chicago. <laughs> I, I, I'm stupefied by this. This is a, a, a great job. Here's, uh... There, yep, he's at, uh, what is that? Yeah, oh, this is right back huge, in. And now he's getting max collect. Oh, look at this. Dave is not happy. 1-1 one, one in the final. Uh, look at that. It's a 100,000-point ball on Old Chicago. Yeah. That'd be great. <laughs> I'm just going to be quiet and watch the mastery here. See, like right there, he was trying to yeah. live catch, and that's what got him into trouble. Wow, so if you're at home, give, give Josh a round of applause. Uh, looked like he got an extra ball there right at the end. I think the extra ball comes on after you spell Old Chicago and... Or no, no, it's uh, the drops on the right, uh, second set of drops. So since the old games aren't typically seen as often, why don't we give a quick rundown of the rules just to make sure that someone who's unfamiliar with it knows what's happening. So on Old Chicago, the, the words Old Chicago there spell each each light is worth, uh, what, 2,000, I want to say, or 3,000, mm-hmm. I always... There's too many of them to remember. Uh, you advance that. There's a few targets on the play field that will advance... Um, so it looks like, is he playing his extra ball? Uh, he must have gotten, that must be in the rules there that they got to play their extra ball. I'm pretty um, sure that the IFPA functions the same way as uh, as Papa do. I can't verify this, but I'm pretty sure they function the same way in that if it's awarding an extra ball, you play it as it was. You play it. Always play your extra ball. Right. Um, uh, but so the the uh, you build up you, the spinner also advances uh, the bonus so that spinner uh, from the right flipper so when you don't have many letters you generally want to hit the spinner and try to get your old Chicago up but uh, that scoop in the middle there every time you hit it it collects the full bonus of what you have and Dave watched Joshua pull you know ten. 10 out lanes in a row back in and he was unlucky and did not get a chance to do it. The skill shot at the start, you see that one of the two lanes is lit. It's uh, the, one of the great ironies of pinball. That ball will go through the unlit lane. <laughs> it's never so the one often. you want. <laughs> it, it just... And there's a couple of, of very minor switches up there that will swap it right at the last instant when you don't want it to. But the uh, skill shot's very important. It's 3,000 points versus, oh, what, 50? 500? Uh... And advanced bonuses, so like right here, well here that we see it, yeah, it's five hundred. Um, so you want to when Get you don't there. have many letters, you want to hit that spinner. Oh, there's the that's the Kaylee drain that uh, or Kaylee tilted. When it comes to back down that spinner, it's always straight down the middle on almost every old Chicago you'll ever play. So there's the skill shot. Yeah, uh, three thousand points on a skill shot may not seem like much whenever one of our players just put up a hundred k, but it, it is. It usually does come down to if someone can nail that skill shot, um, you know, repeatedly throughout the game. It's a big advantage. Look at that! Look at that! <laughs> it's, he just couldn't. No matter where that ball was going, the uh, skill shot was going the opposite. So I see this oh, green light just good. came on. What? What? That's is the green a double light? bonus on ball three, and it should be a five ball game. In which case, double bonus is lit on ball three and ball five. And I want to say the collect hole, I think it's a setting as to whether you collect a double bonus or not in the collect hole. I'm honestly I think you not do. sure. I think you do. Um, but I, it, it also, it can be a setting. I think at the Papa one, it does not. But again, I could be wrong. We play so many different uh, EMs probably from a list of 75 decent games. Yeah, I know some of the some of the FSPA guys, the Free State Pinball Association guys from D.C., Maryland, and Virginia, they have a guide that they actually use to help them with some of the intricacies of the different games they play. Because in some of the tournaments, Pinburg especially, you end up playing a lot of different games, and even the seasoned competitive players can't remember all the different nuances of them, or, you know, or how the specific version of a game is playing. It's uh, Yeah, it's funny, uh, especially at Pinburg more than any Thing, you see so many people running over to other people to ask them. Yeah. It's like, you know, quick, how do I get to multi-ball on Phantom of the Opera? Or, you know, what do I do on this game? Uh, I know I get uh, quite a few people come and for some reason ask me. And, and sometimes I know, and other times it's like, I don't know, go ask, you know, someone else. It's a bit bizarre that pinball has evolved into a game that has no coaching, or at least coaching isn't supposed to be allowed. 
Uh, obviously, it happens uh, in a lot of different situations, but you know, it, it, it with its history as an arcade game or even a bar game, um, the idea that competitive players shouldn't or or won't talk to one another about strategies it, it strikes me as weird. Yeah, and I think that's sort of a false uh, uh, that it's a false reputation that I find that most even the top players. Um, what, what was that? Was that just a? Was it? Oh, a- he's playing the wrong player. Oh no. <laughs> You know, he already had over a hundred grand, uh, yeah. and he so, was doing well on that ball too. Uh, that's the the downside of playing as players one and three is you sometimes you lose track and you forget to plunge player two and four's ball uh, to get there. And the reason for those watching that that they do that is to avoid what happened at the uh, finals of IFPA, which is you can't tilt through. The worst you do is you tilt through to players two and four who aren't playing. Uh, you keep uh, a reel in between the two of you, basically, uh, to make sure that uh, nobody is disqualified. On these older games, if there's not much bonus, the tilt bob can still swing, and unfortunately the game will think the next player has tilted as well. Uh, it's a flaw in the in the physics of the older games, and I've heard that there's been some work to fix the tilt through problem on some well, older games. It can't happen. They, they can't fix it on EM machines, but they can fix it on some solid state games. Stern machines now uh, have it written into the software, or they always have had it written into the software where you can't tilt through another player. Uh, but the Bally and Williams version of the old solid state games, you could tilt through the next player. And by tilt through, I mean shake it so hard that it tilts, as Adam said, your ball and the next player's ball. Um, and there has been some effort to go back through and rework those rules and rework the ROMs so that the Bally Williams games function similar to how the, the old Stern games do and that you can't tilt through another player. Right, and so, but for the IFPA, that's that's standard for all of their tournaments. And in, in the mm-hmm. IFPA 11 to be played at uh, Game Exchange in Denver, uh, they will be following those rules as well. And they did it in Germany last year. And, You're talking uh, about following the uh, every other player. every other player for the four player EMs. Uh, I I know Josh Josh Sharp was telling me that uh, that there was some you know people complaining about it, and he said you know, and then they app and then they tilted through to that player and they stopped complaining about it <laughs> you know so it, it does happen and uh it's a it's a reasonable thing to do but you got to also be thinking a little more because of what happened there with joshua we saw he was having a really good ball but it didn't count not only that he got practice on a game and i think the, the next ball if you uh if you watch i think dave heggy actually got to play his player four ball before going to player one uh, it, it wasn't a it was a pretty quick ball but I think because of that the idea that Joshua got one extra ball there that, that he did he played it for a little bit as well there's the drain that we always see they just compensated him yep and so I want to say so now they're plunging through so it looks like Josh is Heggy's in a hole here and it looks like Josh is pretty solidly positioned to go up 2-1 in this match that is correct because they were at at uh, they were at one to one and uh, it was just that that killer ball that Joshua mm-hmm. had on was it ball one or ball two that yeah he reached I, he reached Valinor and that pretty much just put a nail in the coffin yeah and it's funny on the old one sometimes the ball just seems to get into this pattern where it'll drain right away or it won't drain at all um, and Joshua was certainly in that it won't drain at all. Ooh, wait, are we going to see some F-14? I know this flyer. This, uh, Yeah, that F-14, that's a game that'll just eat you alive if you're not on it. Uh, let's see. Is the kickback lit at the start or not? It's always the first thing to look at. Uh, and it looks like the kickback no. is not lit. So, uh, once again, there are many videos that will explain gameplay here, but basically you want to get to multiball by finishing your uh, the red and blue lights you see flickering at both you can do it up at the upper play field or at the lower play field shooting the right scoop which you can't really see to the right of that upper flipper uh, will award one of those lights what is it tomcat that it spells yeah they appropriately spell tom and cat excellent and uh you gotta do it four times uh yes there's uh there's three lock balls and then i believe uh you you light spell it one more time to 
right. make the siren go off. And the, the shot to the right of the upper right flipper will spot letters in Tom and Cat uh, in order to help you move to move towards multi-ball. So if you really want to simplify this game, as some tournament players do, down into the absolute base strategy, if you just shoot what is essentially that outer right dead-end shot over and over and over, you're going to reach your goal eventually. But there's a lot of other stuff going on inside the game. Um, Adam, if... Go ahead. Yeah, no, I was just going to say, in the time it took us to describe that, we're already on uh, ball two here. As you, it's a, it can be an incredibly housey game. Um, there's a big gap between the flippers uh, down the middle. The out lanes are grabby, and if you don't have your kickback lit, it's like uh, you know performing without a net. Uh, there's a lot of side-to-side movement. Wow, there's... You know, that was, uh, I don't know, that was sort of a funny bounce off trying to get control on the right flipper just going down to the center there. Uh, it's, but it's a really, it's a fun and enjoyable game, and a lot of players like it, uh, like the challenge of it. Well, aren't there so many games like that where they, they leave you almost having achieved something, or it's so hard to get to a particular goal that whenever you finally do get there, it's so rewarding that it drives you to play the game over and over and over? Isn't that kind of some of the you know it, th- that's the base to the enjoyment of so many of the of the most difficult pinball machines out there? That's it, and that's true. And and people go out of their way. I like to pull the posts on regular games just to make them that much harder, so that it's a uh, it's more satisfying when you when you do well versus if you just have it set up factory and you know you ha- you play for half an hour and get to do all the things. It's great, but. Uh, the challenge of it in this game just even without making it hard can be we're seeing some power in lanes here uh it, it really can make it terribly satisfying uh when you do well on it it touches a little bit on what i had mentioned earlier uh, when we were watching the tron game about that end of line shot being satisfying um f14 is, is a game that whenever you finally do accomplish your goal the game goes nuts all the lights go off all the flashers go off there's a beacon on top of the machine that spins in circles and it, 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 it's, just, it's satisfying. It makes you feel good. It, you know, whenever you're in an arcade playing this game and you light it up and, uh, you know, and you're entering multiball, everyone within 30 feet of you, it, you know, knows what happened. Yeah, that's true. I, Escher was playing this in Louisville uh, earlier this year at the Papa Circuit. And he had like an 8 million point ball, got to two multiballs, got the jackpot on both times. And, and you're right. Everybody were, you know, wandering around and seeing it and watching and it. Uh, I'd never gotten 8 million ever on this game. I, I don't get to play it very much. But uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a great game in how just wickedly hard it is. And uh, it was the final game played of... Uh, what Papa? Papa fourteen. Andre 14. Masenkoff. Uh, yeah, Josh Sharp yeah. was involved in that. Uh, we Not saw that F fourteen on. Uh, wasn't that? Oh no, it was the Indiana Jones from that match that we were playing. Uh, no, in Louisville, we oh, uh, it, it was, was the, yeah. the same F fourteen game that Josh won the Louisville a Arcade on it. Expo on. Because you guys uh, brought yeah, well, it from it, Papa. It's representing Andre's win. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So, yeah Andre, so anyway, back uh, to the game here. <laughs> I was going to say it's almost a little ironic that Dave doesn't raise his flipper for the right shot, but he, he is raising it. Some players like to raise the right <laughs> flipper on this game because it, it gives a slightly better approach angle to that uh, right loop. I don't it's know more, if it's a mental or... Well, it, it's more than just the approach angle. If you miss it to the left and the flipper's up like that, it's a better rebound. It, it's not just going to brick off of the, the tip of the flipper back at you. It'll redirect it into the wall and give you a little bit more time to control the rebound. Right, so that's why you... you it's funny because Dave always lifts his flipper, but in this one, it's uh, a lot of other people will follow along. We see the scores are pretty close uh, right here. And uh, is this Joshua playing? Uh, just oh, I saw the hat. Yeah, yeah. So uh, maybe Dave doesn't raise his flipper here. It's the opposite. Uh, yeah, he's got to be getting close to multi ball here. But uh, if you don't get to multi ball, then all those other facets of the game. Uh, really come into play. Uh, danger. Yeah, you always worry. It's like, oh, God, did I tilt? No, no, it's a good danger. Destroy enemies. All right, here we go. Boy, a lot of power inlets. So you kind of, what you need to do in multi-ball is shoot that same sh- right loop shot uh, three times. Twice to, there's one. There's one. Oh, we tried to post pass over quickly he's got to get control again very nice joshua an excellent control player there's Plug two there. oh man and now he's trying to do a quick all right he's got control 
Uh, Bailed out a bit on that. Yeah, I'm surprised by that a little, but he's right back at it. There it is. Okay. Let that one... No. Get it. Wow, he got it. Bam. No? What what I miss? Did he... Does it just take a while to... Yeah, it? It, it, it's just still going through all the different... Like you said, it, when you get to your goal, it's uh, it's an awesome light show, and the sounds, and the, the whole experience, it's a... Uh, probably makes it why why this game is so uh, seemingly popular even when it just kicks everyone's ass so much <laughs> look at that five he was at 500,000 roughly and now he's at 2.6 just, yep. just that was a big jackpot mm-hmm. skyrocketing and, uh, it seems like the ball should be ready to die now but nope he's right back at it so we see he's he's gonna spell tomcat again and uh, he likes to do it up top because a lot of times you can get lots of rebounds and you can spell lock multiple times without the ball being in jeopardy. There's some nice uh, subtle nudging there to bring it out of uh, danger. I've talked to some players in the past who say that they prefer just not to flip on the upper flippers in this game, which always struck me as odd. Um, whenever you're playing this game, Adam, uh, do you find you have I, any particular strategy? or You know, hopefully I've played it a few times. I will shoot up top and see what kind. Of, I think you can find some patterns up top to really get the ball to be to come back to your flippers up top and get a lot of your Tomcat work done. Um, people don't like to do it because if you can get if you can hold the flipper up and get a reliable feed to down low, you can then shoot your scoop, and uh, which is a safer way to do it. Um, I know someone like Kaylee, who's a you know ultimate control player. If he can hold an upper flipper and have it feed clean to a trap down low, mm. he'll just do that all day long. He'll drop down to the lower one. He'll. Uh, hmm. Dave's not happy about I'm, that. I'm guessing uh, Joshua won that game, mm-hmm. uh, and that means Joshua is up three to one here. Is that where we are in the match? That, that is it. That is That's, correct. Uh, and it's best of four, so uh, Dave's going to have to win the next three games. Yep, it's three to one, and uh, so the loser gets to choose. So Dave is going to pick this game, and it's ACDC, everyone's favorite new game. Uh, he's going for train, rock and roll train, which is the left ramp. Uh, it's really both ramps, uh, which and people go to jam multi ball. Which is, uh, I don't know what the first one is, but six or seven ramp shots. Seven, I think. Yep. And, uh, oh. See, we're playing a premium here with the lower playfield uh, cut out. It's called yep. the, affectionately referred to as the hell playfield because all the hell modes send the ball down below. This, ACDC is one of those games you were talking about briefly about how the new games come out and new players have to continually or players have to continually adapt to the different software iterations. ACDC is a game that especially has gone through a bunch of different primary scoring strategies in competition play. Um, yeah, you're not kidding. With uh, twelve different songs that essentially uh, relate to twelve different strategies of building up that song jackpot. Uh, Lyman has constantly, Lyman Sheets, the programmer, uh, trying to just dial in the risk-reward and the value of each of those modes. Uh, early on, some of the modes were way more valuable than others, and everyone would, were playing the same modes. And so then he would go and make those modes worth less and bring and suddenly make other modes that nobody would think about playing, and suddenly they became super valuable. Uh, you know, the first mode I think everyone started playing was uh, uh, War, War Machine. Machine yeah. yeah, with that left spinner. And because uh, you could build up a huge song, I remember at Papa when ACDC was in there, that was the strat. Um, well, Papa also was the dawn of the um, yeah. the cannon strategy, yep. which went on for about one tournament until we all realized it was it was going to take four hours to play each game. And you guys had one of the few ACDCs where that man that your cannon was incredibly accurate. <laughs> it was I the great that cannon should be in the cannon hall of fame I think for well, its um, accuracy. What we're talking about is uh, in, in one of the earlier iterations of the software if you did not pull the trigger on the cannon it would shoot it directly up the right ramp and the cannon on the game at Papa I think Bowen uh, the the cannon shot the right ramp like 70 times or something. Oh, I think it was closer to 100 in a row without a miss yeah. and Bowen actually missed once or twice. So <laughs> uh yeah, there was that. And then, you know, Highway to Hell, I think Keith Elwin was the first, uh, at least on tape anyway, to show the incredible exploit because of the lower play field uh, that the timer for your 2X and 3X play field didn't change during 
uh, when you went to the lower play field, and the value of the lower play field was so uh, high that you could take a 3x uh, play field, go down low, and get maybe 20 or 30 million to the song jackpot, feed the cannon, and then collect that song jackpot at 3x. And uh, Keith Owen, who put up multiple billion point games, uh, it was highway to hell all day. And that became the dominant strategy. And then Lyman said, okay, to that. And uh, he dialed back the highway to hell value. And I think we're at the sweet spot now where I've been to tournaments. I've seen five or six different players absolutely start on different songs. Yeah, I haven't seen a dominant strategy come up in this iteration of the software. And what that tells me is that Lyman, like you said, has hit a sweet spot. He's created a game which provides players with a variety of different avenues to success, which is exactly where you want to be because you don't see everyone doing the same thing over and over and over. Um, Players, they get to play the game, and they get to make the decisions. They're not forced into those decisions. So you'll notice down here that these guys, because it's Illinois and Josh and Zach and Lyman are all playing in this, that they're actually playing the newest version that you guys also have at Papa, which is you see how the the shot uh, strobes, and it's it's no longer hit everything. Uh, I don't know if that version has actually... Did that version finally get released to the public? Do you I've, know? I've got to be honest. I don't. I don't, I don't check their website ha- for for <laughs> releases. I'm I don't not sure. think it. Ha- I honestly don't think that's out yet. And uh, other than Papa and apparently uh, Illinois tournaments uh, and a few other people who are lucky enough to have it, uh, I don't think that's been released yet. But yeah, uh, we see the effects of it. We're kind of beta testers. It's a really cool feature. I definitely say I support it, and I hope it uh, becomes um, released if it's not. So what we saw in ball one, Dave Heggie uh, went from train uh, and got to jam, and now he's going to be closer approaching to album. So it'll be interesting to see uh, if he changes his song here, which I assume he will. I would expect Rosie. That's what I would do. But he's going to Highway to Hell now. Uh, Highway to Hell is lit uh, at the start of each ball that when you're playing it. So the first shot to either ramp will go down to the lower play field. Uh, we just saw Joshua Henderson start with Highway to Hell. Um, I, you know, uh, it's, that's, uh, it's safe points in a match play situation. You're going to send the ball down there and you're going to come out with a couple million. Uh, yeah. you know, even if you just flail around, flail around and miss everything, the ball's never in danger. And so at the very least, even if you don't do well and score a lot of points, you're going to get some play time, get used to the game, get used to the flippers. But you know, that's probably countered in this situation by the fact it's the finals. So, you know, they've played this game already. Yeah, I assume that uh, they, they've gotten some time on this. I don't know how many games were available to them. You know, I'm, I get a little spoiled. We did our uh, state finals at uh, Lions Classic Pinball in Lions, uh, where the Spring Classic uh, will be a circuit event. Uh, and that we've got, you know, 45 games there of all errors, and I just sort of assume everyone gets to play that. But, you know, some of these state finals were on, uh, you know, smaller banks of games, and so people are going to play the same game probably every round. Yeah, I will say Kevin Carroll out there in Lions has put together a great resource for you guys. I'm very jealous. Um, it's if, if anyone has ever happens to be in the you know Denver Lions Estes Park area, stop by Kevin's place, go to Lions Classic Pinball, and uh, drop some quarters in the games. You will be rewarded. Yeah, a nice shout out to those guys, and uh, see some. I'm I'm surprised that uh, because of Joshua's accuracy and his ability to ramp out in this game, I'm surprised he doesn't, uh, you know, stay highway to hell. Kind of breaks your rhythm on the ramps because it goes to the lower play field. Uh, all right, so he's in the jam multi ball now. One of the three multi balls, the jackpots are on the ramps themselves. Uh, people shoot it into the bell to get to double scoring. It takes three bell hits, and then you got to. Uh, the bell, the 2x timing uh, times out after 20 seconds unless you continue to hit the bell you can get to 3x and really the big scores in this game come when you uh, take your jackpots and your song jackpots and collect them uh, with the 2 or 3x play field uh, scoring going as well and that's the other thing about this, not only do you have all the song strategies to build song jackpots right there we see an add a ball if you make all five shots during multi-ball, uh, you'll get a ball saver and another ball thrown into play. Uh, the three multi-balls are all different uh, and enjoyable and have a whole different sort of feel to them. Um, on the album and tour multi-balls, you can actually collect the value of your song jackpot without the song jackpot resetting. It's not available on Jam, but Jam's the easiest multi-ball to get by ramping out. We see the cannon is strobing now. That means the cannon is lit. Uh, 
Dave's at 45. He's checking right now. Let's see. He has one target one bank more. for album. He, he's got to think. This is a great part of the game. Does he want to cash in his cannon now, or does he want to change his song? He's got his song lit. He's got to change to something. Uh, I'm cashing at this going. point. If it's if I'm in a match play situation going up against a score that it's Dave is going up two. against, I'm I'm still doing it. I'm I mean like like Steve Bowden says, always be cashing. Get those points while you can get them. Yeah, and you play you know, and and it's true that Josh doesn't have a whole lot going here. So I I probably agree with it under this situation. Generally on ball two, I uh, you know you can afford to be a little riskier because you're not all in. But then again, he's built his song jackpot up pretty good. Uh, I never play. Uh, he's still in. Did he change? What did he change to anyway? Oh, he's in uh, Highway to Hell. Uh, Highway to Hell. The the award of the song jackpot during album is uh, related to when that song was actually played first time live <laughs> by ACDC. <laughs> Uh, and you have to go to Wikipedia in their discography to, uh, or you could just ask, you know, the guys who have it written down on their cheat sheets. Yeah. Uh, I think Highway to Hell is relatively early in that. It's funny the odd things that pinball makes you know. I mean, how many people know 1995 NBA trivia because the game <laughs> NBA right. Fast Break? The, uh, <laughs> the the six man award was. Uh, yeah. I'd have to see the choices, but yes, you're right. The, now everyone knows all of ACDC's discography. Uh, all I know is that whole lot of Rosie is old, and it's awarded as the third or fourth award sure. during the album, and that's uh, that's what I think the sweet spot is. Gives you just enough time to get two X going. He's got two X going here now. You know, on top of all this, you also have your VIP passes, which is another great feature of the game. Uh, there's this big red flashing button. And the VIP will award, depending upon the situation, whatever you kind of need to be rewarded with. Uh, he's down in Highway to Hell again. We, I just saw his song jackpots up to the 17, 18 million now, and he might have his cannon ready to go straight out of this. We'll I, I see. think he does, and That's, building. And 2X. Yeah. This so, could be a pretty big shot here coming out of the situation. And he's building his song jackpot at 2x right now. So even with the new rules on Highway to Hell, it can... All right, so let's see. Yep. Oh, no. He only has his... Uh, bam. There's 9 million. Only the 9 million doubled. That was mm -hmm. just the uh, combo. Uh, still not payoff. bad. Nope. And his song jackpot is still there. Putting distance between him and Henderson. That's not yeah. to say Henderson can't do this. Obviously, Josh could put up, you know, turn around and put up 400, um, way, you know, b before the game's over. But uh, I, I'm, if I'm in, if I'm Dave right now, I'm getting every every jackpot I can whenever I can get it. Right, and uh, this is truly the ultimate one ball game because your song jackpot resets on every ball. It's like three different games uh, played at the same, you know, one after each other. That there's very little carry over there other than the progress towards some of the multi-balls uh, in some ways it helps to know uh, we've seen Trent come back from you know down 200 million mm -hmm. uh, if you know you need that huge payoff at the end you're not going to you're not going to do the, the short cash-ins you're going to build yeah. and build and well, try really, to get the big stack really what really what Dave is doing by cashing in is he's limiting Josh's options and yep. you know that's what that's what the goal is in that situation you want to narrow the other player into a box where sure they can win if they execute perfectly but they have to execute perfectly you're right and it forces and it forces him to you know go for the home run the, the single and double no longer works and uh, the other you know I talk about Joshua still only being 16 years old what, the only other sort of weakness, and it's hard to call somebody having a weakness who makes Papa Finals every year uh, and is so dominant in other term tournaments, uh, is maybe the in-game strategy and the, the deep rule knowledge of all the games. And I know he's more comfortable on the modern Sterns, but I don't know whether he has the full nuance, the full package of every little uh, risk-reward, you know, and, and making that decision that uh, as full-grown adults, maybe we have more life experience to help us. Uh, hey, if, if that's the flaw that people say I have, I would be feeling pretty good because those are things that you that could solve with experience and solve with practice. So, you know, the, the fact that he's got the game and he's got the skills, that sets that's going to set him apart because the knowledge, that'll come. You just you have to play a lot and you have to put yourself into those situations. Oh, look at that. Beautiful live catch there. And uh, like you say, and it's the live some of those live catching that you can't really coach. It's 
you got to learn how to do that too. But some people just do it better than others. Um, and Joshua is, has has a great live catch, and his instinct is to live catch over dead bounce, uh, and it really saves him a lot. Uh, if you can control with the live catch, so he's sticking with uh, Highway to Hell here, um, trying to start to build his song jackpot. He hasn't, you know, everything's in front of him. Uh, and he's only on ball two, so it's not, you know, super panic time yet. Uh, you see when the cannon's not lit after going to Highway Hill, kind of just fires it out there. But he's got control again. So uh, he's going to need to keep going on into album. And when you get down to one target left on TNT, you need to think about uh, to get to, to light your album multiball, you got to drop uh, some of the targets three times, whether it be TNT or the ACDC targets on the left or spell rock on the right. There's a nice little nice side save. Nice I, I like it. I'm seeing more and more of it here, and I hadn't seen it in earlier uh, overhead cams from maybe a year ago. So that's uh, good work from Joshua to uh, add that to his repertoire. It's going to make him even more scary of, as a competitor. So when is Josh going to start thinking about bringing the bell into play? Well, so he's just hit the bell for the second time. He's in jam multiball. And, you know, if you get all the way through jam... Uh, you use your out of ball. The uh, super is on the bell, and you could really, you can do it with like a great jam. But in a way, jam is prepping for album, mm-hmm. right? You're building up. You want to build up your song jackpot, which is one of the reasons I don't really care for Highway to Hell, because uh, you're not you're not building your song jackpot very much uh, on the upper play field with Highway to Hell, which is a lower play field feature. Uh, whereas if you're in, you know, rock and roll train. Now you're doubling all your shots. There's his out of ball. Uh, you know, your your shots are more valuable because you're building song jackpot and you're also getting jam multiball and working towards the jam super. Uh, and I think in the tutorial that Bowen does, he talks about sort of matching some of the songs with different multiballs and such. Yeah, you see, and, you see a lot of people jump into TNT for that reason. Um, yeah, that's right. Uh, or, or Thunderstruck, which are, you know, more of the targets and when if there's more... I don't want to say flailing, but there's more balls around with uh, hitting more switches. Some of the other modes that reward switch hits uh, and play field features that you're not generally going to aim for uh, are good ones to take into multi-ball. There's also, of course, you know, shook me all night long in the pop bumpers because so many balls are being fed up top. Uh, I like Rosie because that's the uh, in lanes uh, up top. And when the balls keep getting fed, you're, you're progressing Rosie. Uh, also, because I that's like the only song I know when it's awarded in an album. So I'm more of a one-trick pony. Uh, so he's sticking with the plan. He's, uh see if we can see what his song jackpot is there. See the loops are worth. Come on, show us that. There's it. So his song jackpot's up to 12 million now, which is not bad at all. But oh, wow. There's, there's, there's a downside of uh, Highway to Hell. That, that random cannon shot is... Uh, you know, it can house, it can be housey. Uh, and Dave here at ball three at 120, he's got a hundred million uh, lead, and he's got jam lit. So he, let's see what song he goes to now. You, you know, get a uh, bonus every time you change your song too. So uh, it's good to change your song. You know, you get points for changing your song as well. Usually, the, on the on the premium games with the drop targets, that that random shot out of the cannon can be a little bit more forgiving because it's. You know, the drops absorb a little bit of the energy, and it doesn't rip back down towards the flippers or towards the outlanes quite as fast. You have a little bit more reaction time. On the pro model of this game, they're not drop targets, the uh, ACDC, TNT, or Rock targets. Uh, they're stand-ups, which just, you know, they'll send the ball flying back at you. There's no... Uh, uh, yeah, the, the advantage is I think you get your album sooner because you're going to... You just end up hitting more of these targets. Mm-hmm. But you're right. I, I always have a lot of trouble adjusting to playing the pro now because... We get to play the uh, LE and uh, Lions, and actually we got about four or five in Colorado. You know, there's a couple back and blacks and uh, all the nice ones. And uh, you're right, the the uh, amount of energy those drop targets absorb, you never really appreciate till you play the pro. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh my God, the ball just flies around. Uh, so it uh, right here, Dave chose Thunderstruck to take into Jam Multiball, just like we yep. were talking about. Yep. And uh, on Thunderstruck, there's a strobing, the, uh, I don't know what you call them, the, re- the round lights uh, near the ramps, on either side of the ramps. The stand-up lights. just hit lights. one right there. Stand-up yeah. lights. Uh, they, it strobes around, and when you hit one, it will light a, another shot for really good value. 
I, I don't personally play Thunderstruck, so I don't know, but I know a lot of people actually choose it. It gets There's a big. Nice back end there. It, it, yeah. It, yeah, it definitely gets big. Um, did he? Uh, he used his VIP. Yeah, was there that too. VIP brought the Attaball back in? Yep, he hadn't used okay. it yet. He's on ball three, so he'd have three VIPs. And uh, if so long as you've made at least two of the five ramp shots, uh, two of the five shots to get your out of ball, you can VIP in. And uh, that's exactly what you do. I, I only use my VIPs on ball three to add a ball in a multi ball and hopefully album because that's where the big payoff is. Uh, I don't think they're the they're just not at good value any other time in the game. Even if you have a big, uh, you know, a, a big jackpot set up on in ball two, you're not bringing it out early. Uh, I personally, no. Uh, you know, but again, game situation. If you're getting ready to put the nail in the coffin, sure, go ahead and do it. Uh, another uh, Hell's Bells is another great mode because of the the, the way uh, Hell's Bells. Did he? It just he it, 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 it rip. No, it will. It looked like he hit it dead on, but then it came back, hit the sling, and went right out the left out one. Huh. So he's at 150, but I uh, couldn't tell. We'll have to go back and uh, watch again to see whether he was awarded that cannon shot or you think he missed it there. Oh, see, right right there, I think he could have slit saved that. Uh, we've seen Joshua do it and get a double danger. Nothing to lose at that point. A uh, little bit of bonus, but... Uh, it did come back from that ramp reject pretty quickly, so it might have been hard to identify that it was going straight down there. So Josh has a long road to hoe here. He's got a lower play field lit. And... You know, he hasn't used album yet, so I you go to Rosie here. What's he going to? Yeah. War Machine? What's he going to do? See, here's where I think maybe... He's changing it up for the first time, isn't he? What? I didn't even see... Okay, War Machine. Yeah. So it's, that's a good choice. You uh, you hit the left spinner over and over, and you're working towards tour multi-ball. And uh, if you can get to tour multi-ball, then your song jackpot's going to be a good 15, 20 million. There's a good little slide there. Only took one danger there. Okay, got to get control here. I will say uh, that if, if the live catch off of the right orbit in War Machine is consistent, then this is a really controllable mode. Yes, we've, uh, that's why I think why Kaylee likes it so much. He's such a control player that uh, he enjoys. You know, and if you like, you say you get that live catch, you could do that all day as you know, long as you don't miss. You know what else? One of the uh, this actually just reminded me. One of the early software iterations, one of the strategies we didn't discuss was looping a left ramp over and over during rock and roll chain. Um, you see some players loop out on that left ramp, um, go left flipper, left ramp, left flipper, left ramp over and over to build up towards jam. Yep, uh, and you can. It, some some machines are better for backhanding than others. Now, see, it's interesting to me that Joshua picked War Machine, but he's just trying to get back to Jam. It, and yeah. I think there are better songs to choose if that. It, and going to Jam is not necessarily a bad thing. I like it. Do you to think help build song jackpot? Do you think he's doing it uh, because Jam was the closest multi ball, and he wants to just cradle on the left and then move towards? Uh, I honestly don't know, Mark. I, uh, Jam, but it wasn't that close. He had to hit. Yeah. He, he made a bunch of ramp shots there, and he's still he's not really going for. He's not playing the controlled game. War machine. So, so I sense. don't understand. I would have, if if you were going to go to Jam and do it that way, I think Rosie or uh, um, Shook Me All Night Long would have been a better option there. Boy, that's a nice on the fly combo there. Who needs to live catch that loop when you can just go to the left ramp on the fly? Yeah. Why, All right. Why no. Waste time? Settle. Yeah. See, right, right there. I, I think you need to just let that ball go and not try to get one more extra ramp there. I think, so let's see how many more to tour he has. I think Josh might find himself in between strategies. Yeah. Right, so album's lit right now, but he, he must change song here. War Machine is like one of their new songs, so you'll never get the song jackpot during album on from War Machine. Well, I won't say never, but it's pretty darn hard. Change that song, okay. Josh. Good. All right, Rosie. Come on. TNT. All right. Nothing wrong with that. I'll take nope. that. Um, I don't know where TNT is on the uh, list of when it was played live in terms of where you can get that song jackpot. I think it's the, extremely early. Is it an old? It's one of their originals? Yeah. You know? TNT is a Bon Scott song. I know it's very early in the discography. Okay. And uh, hopefully Henderson hasn't used his Attaballs yet through VIPs. So he could settle in and really get that song jackpot you know, built up pretty good here. Uh, he's trying to get, you can see he's trying to work the bell here. He really needs to get 2x scoring going. There's, there we go. 2x is going. Nice little flick there to try to get control. 
not a game you want to really create when your two X's go and you want to keep things moving. Uh, I think he's doing a pretty good job of both being in control and getting some good value shots. Uh, the the uh, jackpots in this mode are once again finishing a set of targets, which uh, finish a lot easier on the pro. Yeah, I mean, one of the nice decisions about having TNT running here is that even, to lose his two X. even sometimes your miss shots are, uh, you know, work yeah. out for you. If you yeah. can get that combo off of the left bank up into the TNT and sometimes even down to the right bank, you can hit all three of them with one shot off the right flipper. So he lost track of his 2x there, and uh, it timed out. He's trying to go back at the bell now. Uh, he's going to be getting up to see. Uh, he wants to try to light his cannon and have it ready. Ideally, you finish multi-ball. You still have that 2 or 3x going for that cannon shot. He's probably one more, I want to say, one more bell away he's from trying, 3x. Yeah, he's here. almost back to it at this point. See if he takes uh, a shot. No? Okay, it's lit. Oh, I see it. It's He's trying to get... Oh, he's got control. All right, he'll take this 2X cannon collect. Bam! Did he get it? No. Oh, it didn't give it to him. He missed it high, I think. Let's see if it works out for the better, if he can now get 3X going and get even. Uh, when you miss the cannon and you shoot at it, it takes you three more sets to relight it. Uh, whereas if you don't shoot at all, it uh, you only take one set to relight it. A lot of people don't realize that. By set, why don't you explain what you mean? Uh, the in-lane outlanes that spell fire. fire. So you've got to spell fire three times to light the cannon, but if you don't actually fire the cannon, uh, then you only have to spell fire one more time to relight it. Which is a great little bit of programming, I might add. Yeah, I love that. The, once again, the, the nuance of the risk-reward is, is uh, excellent. Good job, Lyman. Mm -hmm. Uh, meanwhile, where's Josh's score? Get him up there. I'd He's up to about 88. 88. Boy, I, I would, that, if he had gotten that 2x collect, he could have. that would have been another 30 or 40. Mm -hmm. Would have been real. Look at that. Live catch. That's, again, see, I'm, my brain says dead bounce there, and he just stops that thing perfectly. We were talking about uh, whenever player one puts up a big score, you're playing someone in a match play situation, how you're trying to pigeonhole your opponent into, you're trying to limit their options and pigeonhole them into a specific set of circumstances, or outs as they say. And uh, this is this is one of those games where you could have the same amount of play time as someone else and come up with only half their score. Because you didn't, you know, you didn't take that extra shot at the bell or, you know, set or up Or whether your score was 2x or 3x. Right. Yeah. Uh, sometimes, it, oh boy, that it, that ball really tries to drain off the bell hit. Yeah. It's often uh, not even about how many shots you hit; it's about what order you yeah. hit them in. I, I agree with that slide right there. That was clearly going yeah. straight down the middle, and he wasn't there yet on bonus. Uh, he kind of the, the ramp shot sort of left him there at the end. Uh, he was struggling. Um, I it, I think I think if he makes that two x. Uh, cannon collect there during multi-ball he wins that game yeah you know you, you loosen up a little bit you, you put a you know you drop a big bomb jackpot wise onto the board um yeah you know sometimes missing or making that shot at the critical moment can just it, it changes everything for you not just score wise but just mentally uh it puts you into the zone uh i see that uh dave's putting in drop the target you think uh that's a commentary on the uh the 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 switch not... Uh, I'm going to say he's encouraging people to pick up the drop target zine, which is a nice little pinball uh, pinball pamphlet. Oh, okay. Cool. I actually have no idea. Uh, okay. And, uh, let's see. What do we get here? It's, uh, I love the feature. I, I, and when you're, when you're doing our games, when we're in the booth at Papa, you always got to stay on the game <laughs> to see what the players put in. A lot of people throw out shouts to, you know, Neil Schatz or Rick Stetta or... I always tell Escher now that if he gets a chance, he has to do mom. M-O-M is a nice one. I think Raymond Davidson did a mom or dad. Yeah. Or, in, uh, you know, playing ooh. Bram Stoker's Dracula, toss in the sun there, S-U-N, and see what happens at the end. <laughs> yeah, there's a few of those. A-D-G and uh, Roadshow, uh, Dean Grover's initials. Yeah. That's, uh, you get a funny quote. Hmm. Uh, so, hey, 8-Ball, the original 8-Ball, not the deluxe version. Yeah. I don't see this in uh, turdies too much, but it's a fun game. So what here? That drop, the red drop target on the right side lights the spinner. Is that correct? 
everything that right loop does everything you want it to do. I was pretty sure that you have to hit the that one drop target there on the right side first. For some reason, I thought that that lit something. Or is it all just based on the loop? It's it's the right. No, the right drop. You're correct. The right. Uh, you see how the the right yeah. loop lit just lit the left there. Okay. It's it's that right switch is what uh, awards the uh, eight foot one the actual eight ball. Okay. For some reason, I thought um, it also lit the spinner, which each, uh, and the spinner. You're right. Okay. It, it did or did it not? I think I, it did. I haven't played eight ball in a while. You're right. Yeah. And that's that's the key is the spinner shot. Mm-hmm. Uh, each ball and is in bonus. Uh, you get the ball. There's different switches on the field and, and the uh, upper play field, uh, the upper lanes uh, award you the ball. So the skill shot's actually pretty important because you want to go through a lit one. Uh, we're playing once again players one and three. Player two refused to flip there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wish they'd show the score. Sometimes if you're having a really bad game and the, the auto plunge player is doing better than you after a couple balls, it can be <laughs> oh, like right there, you know. The uh, the auto plunge player got the ball to the flipper, but when Dave Heggie flipped, it did not come to his flipper. So we just so, had to talk about all that ACDC, um, you know, terminology. Do we need to know our Henry Winkler history here for the Fawns on this game or... Is that actually the font? <laughs> it sure it? looks like him with a leather jacket. I always thought it was. I, surely there would have been, you know, copyright issues with that. It, it's more like Zachariah, you know, borrowing all the characters but changing them slightly. Mm-hmm. You know, count Dracula with a K instead of a C and Boy. to avoid international court. Throughout, throughout the history of pinball, it has gone through some pretty wild iterations in art and theming. And... Uh, yeah, I mean, looking at this game just would never be made nowadays. Uh, yes, I agree with that. Oh, man, that right out lane is just Eating gobbling right. everything up. So Joshua is still up 3-2 to two at this point. Uh, neither neither one of them, this is ball two. I assume it's three balls, but, you know, sometimes it can be five balls. I would think solid uh, state they're going to go with three balls. I got to say player two's in the lead right now. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I wish we'd see the score. All right, so Dave here... Uh, the door is open for him to turn this into game seven, get to game seven here. Oh, All right, so when the spinner's not lit, let's see what he does here. Oh, he hits it anyway. You, it you up go there. up top, you get some bonus. Uh, some players will try to tap over right to left, but you don't necessarily going to be able to tap on this. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> Man, those slings. This, this game is just brutal. All right, so uh, and this is player four, who's uh, could be in second place. All right, so there's nothing in it. If this is our last ball, uh, Joshua could close out here with the thirty thousand. Yeah, let's uh, let's see someone put something together here. We know that both these players are capable of ripping into this game, and what's going on here? Just gonna take uh, just gonna take a couple tight spinner shots and. Uh, Get things lit. The, now, the, the right orbit, is this building bonus, or what exactly does that do over on that side? It, well, at first, it lights your kickback, uh, which is the important part of it, and it also builds uh, this value. Uh, uh, there's a, some... <laughs> again, it's a gaping that, uh, maw on the right side. <laughs> Who designed this? What's going on over there? Uh, if you look at it, it is the uh, the, the gate... The steel gate uh, is really low compared to the height of the of the top of the sling. They put the kickback oh, on the wrong side. Player I think. two gets house finally, but in vote as player two takes the lead at seventy four thousand. All right, uh, so Dave is tournament life. This is not the kind of game you want to have your tournament life on. Just all right, he's got control. Spinner's lit. Bam. Oh, <laughs> trouble gone. <laughs> Wow. What can so, uh, you know, and it's really interesting, right? So Joshua Henderson wins and is the Illinois state champion. He will get to go to Lions Classic Pimp. Oh, no. No, no, no. Five ball game. No, it was. No, it was. Oh, I was player out. four. Yeah. Uh, he will represent Illinois in the uh, national championship. Uh, that was an excellent match with Dave Heggie there. Uh, I was just going to say Dave had it on the flipper and the spinner was lit. And one good spinner shot there at a thousand a spin mm-hmm. probably would have got him to game seven, and he missed the shot, and that's probably a shot he could make nine out of ten, yeah. ninety out of a hundred. And that's all uh, you really want. You just want a chance. You want the game to let you play. And but he, it, it did. I mean, to some degree, he had a shot. He, when it wasn't lit on ball two, he nailed it perfectly. But when it was lit. It's like the photons from the light. 
make it a harder <laughs> shot. <laughs> you think they repel uh, the ball? Bowen probably can, you know, makes himself believe the light isn't on to make the shot easier for him. <laughs> so, uh, so, well, there you go. So, what, how, how we're uh, the, the the match is over. How did how is it being in front of the mic? I know you when you watch us do it in the booth. It, sometimes you just you you gotta want to say stuff. Well, right? well, really, what I want to do is just mute you guys. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure everyone wants to do that. <laughs> no, it's it's great. I'm glad uh, glad you invited me on, and uh, I'm excited to see how the IPA uh, state championship or you know the the, the national final works out. Uh, it's going to be real interesting. They're uh, they're hosting it. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. At uh, is it at Lions coming up? Here? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. It's at Lions d- during this the, the Sunday of the Spring Classic, mm-hmm. uh, and maybe you know they like to do it at an event where everyone's going to be anyway, so most people don't have to sort of double up. Mm-hmm. Uh, so really, the best candidates for uh, SCS finals are, well, you know, your place, Papa and Pinburg. Mm-hmm. Uh, if the World Championships, where a lot of players come up in the U.S., so the Spring Classic is right around that. Mm-hmm. Uh, or maybe in Florida, uh, although that's at the end of the year, the IAPA uh, or in Vegas they had talked about, but the dates didn't work out. So the there AMOA. are some places to host it. Yeah, uh, but maybe someday they could do it uh, at the Papa facility, and we could uh, be in the, the broadcast booth again. Yeah, assuming we're not representing our own states. We got a booth. We got a lot of cameras and a TV out there, so you know we'll check the scheduling. And if you are new to competitive pinball, make sure you check out ifpapinball.com or papa.org, and uh, you know get involved. Go out, go to a tournament, join a league, uh, visit some players at a tournament here. Go visit visit someone's collection. Uh, you know, there's it's a lot of a lot of good people involved in the hobby and there's a lot of ways to get interested in it if you are a collector and you've never jumped into the tournament side of things give it a chance make sure you do that you know once or twice it'll make you think about the game in a different way and maybe open up uh, pinball to a whole different le- different level of enjoyment a different type of enjoyment so yeah well said mark mm-hmm. that's uh you're you're one of the great ambassadors to the game of this modern resurgence of of competitive pinball and and we all as as a player i just want to say we all appreciate uh, what you do, your personal efforts, and all the giving us all this wonderful video and audio content, and just making tournaments better, and selecting games, and caring about the games, and being a player, and knowing what we like to see. Uh, you guys are doing an awesome job, so thank you for that. It's my pleasure. There's a lot of great people involved in pinball, and you know sometimes uh, we try and drive it forward, and other times we just drive the wave, or we just ride the wave. So, yeah, <laughs> drive the we wave. drive that I wave. Have to sh- in Pittsburgh, you'll have to show me how that works out. <laughs> so uh, thanks for watching today, and uh, check those websites, and we'll get some more content for you soon. Take care, everybody. Take care, everybody. Take care, everybody. Take care, everybody.